Hello, 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 sweet baby angels and pumpkin hats. It's your girl, Miss Touch of Rest and Stone, and I am back at it again with the video for you all. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Shane Dawson. What kind of commentary channel would I be if I didn't talk about Shane Dawson and his busted ass behavior? Um, I do want to bring something different to the conversation as what I'm going to be doing is breaking down one particular video. I know there's hundreds we could choose from, but I'm going to break down one particular video that I think really does a great job in illustrating how he was able to slide under the radar and what techniques he used to um, push his disgusting messages. So take a listen and uh, we'll get back with my comments. <laughs> iPhone apps. There are thousands of iPhone apps out there and they're getting stupider and stupider every day. I mean, there's an app to make you look fat, an app to make you look old, an app to make you look fat and old. Okay, so I wanna pause right here. Um, the first thing that I wanted to point out that I've noticed is what Shane is doing in this particular setting before he shows you anything uh, ex vile or disgusting or explicit or racist, he gets you to agree with him. And this in sales is getting you on that yes train. When you're in sales, you tell someone to say yes, yes, yes. So you talk about things that are very basic, that are very things that you would agree about. In this particular case, Shane is appealing to the fact that there are hundreds of phone iPhone apps, which there are, and a lot of them are used so you're like yes there are a lot of iPhone apps yes there are a lot of useless iPhone apps okay yes 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 so you've already subconsciously started to agree with the message that he's giving you keep watching enough to make your mom look so fat and old that she freaks the fuck out and shoves an iPhone up your ass mom please don't I'm sorry I hope your ass likes angry birds <laughs> So we're gonna stop once again. And the reason why I wanted to show this is that the mother is not only condoning behavior, but she's an active participant in the behavior. And that's gonna play a part as we get through this video. What can I say? I have a talented ass. Anyways, apps are usually useless. I mean, why can't they invent one that I actually need? Like an app to help find my grandma when she's high on her pain meds and she doesn't know where she is. Or what about an app that turns your favorite TV show into a black version of your favorite TV show? You could call it Blackify. <sighs> We haven't even gotten through this video and I am already ready to just give up on this, but I can't because I want to point out some things for you guys. So obviously there's a problem. I'm sure you all see how insensitive, how stereotypical, how disgusting, how vile. What really bugs me or what really gets me is the the, the, the white version is this wholesome TV show, this wholesome family friendly, and then the black version is the complete gutter, disgusting, poor, drug ridden stereotype. It is disgusting. And I don't know if you caught this, I don't know if you noticed, but the creator of this particular bit, this particular skit was his mother. And honestly, it makes sense because listen, for those of you who do not know, racism is taught racism is taught so it makes perfect sense that his mother would think these things and think that this is funny guys guys you know what we all need to do we need to go to the corner coffee shop, have some big cups of hot chai, and just get all of our feelings out there in the open and talk about our differences. And then we won't have all of this high school drama. That white 
bitch was retarded. Hell yeah. Yo, you know what? That's the first time y'all agreed on something. You right. Maybe we ain't so different after all. Damn! That is some deep shit! Let's go, baby! Who wants to go fail the SAT? The show! Yes! When the scene opens, we're met by a mob of angry black people. Okay, so again, the stereotype of the angry black people yelling and screaming at each other and then what do we have we have the white savior coming in and trying to come calm collected as the peacemaker and they were able to bond and they were able to agree the first time they were ever to agree on something because of this white person now what's interesting about this is how they able to agree was their bond over violence again pushing the stereotype that black people are inherently more violent pushing the stereotype that it takes a white person to come cool calm and collected um, from the same perspective that they're not so different after all it's disgusting it's vile you see then all of the kids uh, pull out guns these are again high school kids they all pull out guns another stereotype that all black people just have guns that all black people are just going to shoot you if they disagree with you or shoot you if they don't agree with you and when you put it in context to how our society does treat black teenagers, it really is shocking when you look at it. And this was the content that was being pumped out and promoted to kids and to teenagers and to everybody on the internet. Um, Shane at this time was a mega star. And so you have these stereotypes, you have this pushing of violence, pushing of anger, pushing of that it takes a white person to come in. And even though they bonded over the death the death of this white girl, that that white girl brought that unity whether they were able to bond. And then when we finally leave the scene, the kids, uh, you know, one of the Danica characters says, who wants to go fill the SATs? Saying that they're all stupid, that they're all not smart. Um, it's disgusting, it's shameful, it's very hurtful. I'm, I'm disgusted by it, it's disgusting. There's no other, there's, you can't justify that this is humor. You can't justify that this is edgy. It's not edgy. It's not humorous. It's disgusting. Shane Dawson goes from that scene, we jump on over to talking about the uh, door, the Explorer. Door, the Explorer makes a little cameo appearance and um, Chris Hansen, of all people, makes a cameo appearance. And Door is the pedophile in this. Um, I can't make it up. It more sexualization of children and children's characters. Just, the sexualization of children continues. Um, I can't make this up, guys. Take a look. But most are total pieces of shit. And the scary thing is, mostly kids are buying apps. And some of the apps are super inappropriate. Almost as inappropriate as the TV shows kids are watching these days. Okay, once again, I want you to take notice to the, the things that he's saying. The kids are buying apps. There's trash on TV. These are all yes answers. So keep that in mind. Subconsciously, you're being pulled in multiple directions. You have, anytime you see Shane in his bedroom, he's giving you something that you would agree with, that most people would agree with. Keep that in mind. Hola, my name is Dora. Hi, Dora. And this is a tree. That's a squirrel. And that's a bunny rabbit. And I'm Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC. Who are you? I'm here to take down all the child molesters in this jungle. But there are no child molesters here, Mr. Hansen. Oh, really? Then who is this? I got Amba! She's getting away! Don't worry, children. The police should be getting a ride about now. <laughs> Yay! Adios, Dora. <laughs> wow, I can't believe Dora's a pedophile. I wonder if Barney is one too. No, Barney just has good taste. So Shane Dawson just cannot help himself when it comes to sexualizing children and children's characters. It's disgusting. There are plenty of clips out there that do show Shane's behavior in sexualizing children to a much more graphic extent. However, I still wanna just put that in there because this video, like I said, has hit so many different things from the racism, from the violence, to the stereotypes, to sexualizing of children. And 
you forget, what was the point of this video? Well, Shane's gonna tell us what this entire video was supposed to be about. Anyways, the whole point of this video is, yes, apps are cool, technology is awesome. But when you start relying on technology too much, and you start paying more attention to your iPhone than you are to people, that's a problem. You gotta find a balance. I only let my ass play with Angry Birds for like one hour a day, max. But then my ass gets to play with a cucumber, so it's all good. So question of the day, what is your favorite iPhone app? Leave me your answer down in the comments, like this video, favorite it, and subscribe. Okay, so I wanna recap. This entire thing was a sell. What he did was he sold us on this message. And the message was a, a message that many of us would agree, that yes, we sometimes do spend too much time on our phones. That yes, it's important to spend time with people in real life, important time with our family and friends. And he was able to get us on that yes, train in the sense that every time we are seeing something that we don't agree with the something that we may object to he gives us something that we could agree to so when you're constantly being pulled back and forth from the no to your yes it's easier to say yes and digest the message in the end and again this is like a sales technique um this is what shane is doing effectively and it's disgusting it's vile because what he's selling is complete trash um and it's it's hard because there are aspects of the message that are easy to agree with. And then you have messages that are completely disgusting and vile. What he's doing is really manipulating the viewer to subconsciously accept the bullshit that he's spewing out, whether it's the racism, whether it's the sexualizing of children, to see it all in a joke. And what does that do when we see things in a joke? It's desensitizing. It desensitizes the viewer so that no longer you're going to be offended or that you may not find those kinds of actions those kinds of thoughts those kinds of opinions as maybe so problematic because it's it's a joke it's funny and i'm really sick of seeing everybody on twitter saying that they miss these old days i am glad that people are finally waking up to the problematic society that we do live in and the problematic arena being the internet there's a lot of things on here that is just gross and vile and disgusting and it normalizes unhealthy behavior and it normalizes unhealthy views whether it's of children whether it's of stereotypes of whole groups of people, whoever he's talking about, chances are he's making fun of them in a way under the guise of humor. And it's usually some bigoted or some sexualization or something vile and disgusting. In my opinion, I do not think Shane Dawson should come back to the platform. I don't. I don't think that he is appropriate. I don't think he's a role model. I don't think he is a, he is not a human being that I want to fuck with. I don't subscribe to Shane. I have not been subscribed to Shane. Um, I've never been subscribed to Shane, but I didn't really remember all of this kind of bullshit that was going on. Um, in the end, this was a great video that I felt that could really illustrate the points of what he does and how his content was able to slide under the radar. Um, and essentially, it's because he sold you. He sold us all who watched his content because there's that likable Shane, the Shane in his bedroom, the likable one that you can agree with, that you can relate to, and then you have the skit where it's such a divide that your brain is very hard to, it's very hard to pull you what back. What a salesperson down. does. This is the language of sales is what he's speaking to you, the viewer. And what he's doing is he's getting you to agree. There's a lot of agreement. When you say yes, it's easier for you to say, it's easier for you to say yes when it comes down to closing the deal. That's simply what it is. And in this case, the deal is to subscribe, to like, to comment, and to um, you know, continue to support the content. And he does that very well. Shane is a very good salesperson and able to sell racism, um, bigotry, uh, sexualization of children. He was able to sell that to the viewer because he was able to use his sales techniques throughout his content. Um, again, his mother is a racist from the conception of this video to even think that this would be funny to even think that this, I have, I don't know. I just, I come from a different world where I've been, I, I don't see things like that. And I know that there are, I just, I come from a different world where this is not funny. This is not it's not it really isn't it really isn't it's not funny um as i mentioned i come from a mixed race family and i have like i just wasn't raised like this this to me is gross and disgusting i'm also a survivor of sexual abuse and sexual assault so to see shane say that he uses pedophilia and he uses sexualization of children as a way to cope with his sexual trauma as a joke 
I, I don't buy that. I don't see that. I don't agree with that. It's very offensive. It's, um, I would never find my trauma funny. Um, and I get, I understand people cope in different ways. There are a few survivors who ultimately turn into predators. Um, that does happen. There's usually that cycle of abuse and uh, predators um, typically will have a more likelihood of being abused when they were children and they repeat that cycle. So it really makes me wonder if he's not necessarily coping, he's trying to justify his behavior. Um, now that's an alleged conspiracy of mine. Uh, as a survivor who has no inclination, I am repulsed, repulsed by the idea of a I don't even like an age gap, to be quite honest with you. I've been molested and, and sexually abused for such a long time that it's very hard for me to see that. That makes sense. Um, I, I don't like age gaps. And, and, and nothing, no, no, hey, listen, for me, you do you. Um, I just have my own trauma. And for me, it's very, it, it would, it's not, it's, I just don't like seeing young, 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 whether it's a boy or a girl with an older person. Um, it makes me uncomfortable for my own trauma. Um, it, it brings back my own stuff. So, and again, you can do you. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I just think it's very interesting that Shane chooses to cope and use humor in something that is not funny at all. Um, I don't buy that. I, I, I don't buy it at all. And I know that wasn't his apology, but let me know what you guys think. Do you remember this video? Do you remember seeing this? Okay, video? it is freezing in my house, so I put my little hoodie on. So mm, shout out, shameless plug. Listen, I wanna hear your thoughts. I wanna hear your comments. I wanna hear your thoughts and opinions. I wanna hear it all. Sound off in the comment section below. Put it down in the comments, join the conversation. Let me know if you like my analysis, my breakdown, my alleged conspiracy. I believe the way he was able to get away with this kind of behavior for so long was his ability to sell the viewer, his ability to use his language in sales. So that's what I got, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you have. Please like, comment, subscribe, uh, turn that bell on, do all that stuff. See you guys in my next video. Until next time, bye-bye.